Underground Bonkar. This is your proprietor on a very grim anniversary in Scientology history. Uh, December 5th. I always dread it because uh, I still feel a responsibility to remind people what happened on this day 27 years ago now final hours and the death of Lisa McPherson and uh, I what I do on this day is I post this conclusion of a series uh, that we put together 20 uh, seven years ago on the 20th anniversary of her death really awful stuff I try to warn people it's drawn from actual records of her final hours uh, what happened was, you know, I'd been marking the anniversary, and when the 20th of them was coming up, I thought it deserved a more thorough treatment. So I went back uh, and read the chapter on Janet Reitman's uh, excellent book, Inside Scientology, from 2011. Maybe the best chapter in her book is about Lisa McPherson. And then I also went, of course, to Jeff Jacobson's website. Jeff has gathered so much important material. And I also went back and looked at police records and some stuff. That I, I drew on stuff that I really hadn't had much attention before. I found some new things. And then what I did was each day, 20, uh, it, uh, this was seven years ago, I decided to cover in real time what had happened over those final three weeks of her life. And I also got incredible new material from Tom DeVott and Mark Headley and Claire Headley. For example, it was Tom and Mark who really made me understand how much David Miscavige was personally involved in what happened to Lisa McPherson. She was a prisoner from Dallas who had moved out to Clearwater. She was working for somebody there who was a Scientologist, and, and she was clearly having mental health problems. And, you know, L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology claim that they have a better alternative than the actual mental health field, and so she didn't get the care she deserved. In fact, as Claire helped me understand, as things got worse and worse for her, Scientology's solution was to make her sit down and write out how she was causing her own problems. Just incredible. Can you imagine doing that to somebody that's having serious mental problems is to make them keep trying to find ways that they're the source of the problem. <clears throat> so eventually they stashed her away in a cabana at the Fort Harrison Hotel and gave her what's called the introspection rundown, which is Hubbard's brilliant solution to psychosis, which is that he believed that you know, auditing, of course, solves everything, but if somebody's having a real psychotic break, they're not prepared for auditing. To get them ready for auditing, you just basically need to put them in a room and, and not talk to them. Give them the silent treatment. So for 17 days, they kept this woman in a hotel room. They always had caretakers with her. This is why I say the whole cockroach thing is nonsense. She had people with her 24 hours a day, okay? They weren't insects crawling all over. <clears throat> I, I, I detailed that in the story today. No, they did, what they did was far worse. They, they, they weren't making sure she had proper liquids. In fact, the things they did get down her throat made things worse. They weren't talking to her. They weren't listening to her. She was raving. Just horrible treatment. And in those final hours, it's just so awful. And she died uh, because, partly because when it was obvious she was in real distress, instead of taking her to the hospital that was five minutes away, they drove for 45 minutes so they could get to a hospital where there was a Scientology doctor, David Minkoff. And over that 45-minute drive, Lisa died. Minkoff is eventually, I think he... Uh, had to give up his medical license for a year or something because he was convicted or found, you know, or I don't know if it was a disciplinary board, I can't remember now. But basically he had been telling, he had been prescribing some sedatives for them to give to her 
even though he'd never actually seen her. And you can't do that when you're a doctor. But of course, he's, you know, operating at full speed these days. His daughter, Rebecca Minkoff, is the handbag designer. She's a Scientologist, too. As to what happened to some of these other people, I know that Janice Johnson, I think was her name, which was one of the worst. She's actually still handing out medical advice, and it's just horrible. But anyway, uh, yeah, grim, grim day. And the reason, and I asked this at the chat, by the way, the, the chat is now working if you're a subscriber and I've been asking some questions there. And I asked, you know, you know, it's been 27 years. Um, is it important that we keep, you know, marking this day? And everyone's saying yes, of course, because those policies are still there. Scientology is still actively trying to destroy the mental health profession with their unhinged front group, Citizens Commission for Human Rights. You know, Scientologists who have psychotic breaks today are going to be treated exactly the same. Now, after Lisa McPherson, they got a little more careful about some things. They actually outsourced the introspection rundown to this uh, place in Tennessee where a Scientologist was running a very bizarre little operation, and, and thankfully they managed to save some people there. He was... In, in, their, in that version of the introspection rundown, this is about six or seven years ago, they were locking people into cabins and the lock was on the outside of the door. You know, what if there had been a, you know, it was in a forested area, what if there had been a forest fire, you know? Uh, luckily, they got those people out of there and shut that place down. There's a lot of confusion about that place. There was some bad reporting on it, but I, I actually managed to talk to some of the people who, whose family members were saved. But that's what they were doing a few years ago. What are they doing now? What are they doing with introspection rundown now? I can tell you one thing. They haven't given up on it. They don't do that. L. Ron Hubbard's ideas about mental, quack mental health ideas are still rule Scientology. Scientologists still consider psychiatry to be absolute biggest evil in the universe. So no, they haven't learned any lessons from Lisa McPherson. And that's why it's important to mark her tragic death every year. And to think about how much better she deserved. So, you know, thank you for putting up with that today. I know it's not fun every year. Uh, I have something a lot more fun for you tomorrow. To try to kind of change things up. So, Lisa, you deserve better. Scientology. We're never going to stop reminding you this horrible thing you did. All right. From Kensico Reservoir in New York. This is your proprietor signing out.